So uh, good afternoon. Uh, we come back with the uh, live endoscopy cases. So a pleasure to work with the team, anesthesia colleagues, Dr. Muhammad Al Nadi, Dr. Ahmad Jahdali. So we have a patient uh, presented with acute uh, biliary pancreatitis, complicated with the world of necrosis. Was managed uh, initially conservatively, but uh, seemed to be still asymptomatic, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and seemed to be have some of the obstruction. So, our role today to assess and to uh, see the plan for drainage, U.S. guided uh, banquette throat collection drainage, or maybe different between world of necrosis and uh, uh, and so the cyst. And then uh, we'll choose the, the device if need to be uh, drained. And we think this most likely you need to use uh, lamps. Uh, and then we'll have discussion of how we can uh, perform the procedure. So I'm using the uh, Olympus scopes. This is the AUS. So, uh, and little bit. So uh, we have a difficulty. So me and Dr. Ahmad and Dr. Muhammad are discussing the difficulty. At the junction, there is some uh, huge inflammatory changes and also uh, pressure from the cystic lesion. As you see, draining this patient. So, Muhammad and Ahmad. So, I think, uh, do you hear me? Good morning, everyone. First, uh, thank you for you, uh, for you Dr. Uh, Ibed, and thanks for all the team. I think uh, the most important point is to have a uh, good access, yeah. uh, a stable position. So you are trying to have the, your scope straight as, as much as you can. So better, the best position, of course, is just below the cardia, but is, it is not a dependent position, which means that you are draining the cyst by the roof. Uh, the other point is the distance between the gastric lumen and the cyst. You want the distance between the gastric lumen and the cyst to be less than one centimeter. This is the best position. And try always to avoid any intervening vessel that would be difficult in case there is collateral. For example, if you are having a thrombus and you are having a formation of a collaterals in the, uh, around the stomach, you will have to choose a, a position where you don't have uh, any intervening uh, vessel. So I think these are the main points you want to have. Uh, you can have an access uh, just below the cardia or deep uh, from the antrum or the body on the posterior wall. Here are the most common two positions where you can drain uh, a cyst, a pseudocyst or even a wood, pan a wood of pancreatic necrosis. So ba basically, once uh, when I, I turn the flow contrast um, uh, feature in the EUS, that's basically, um, as my colleague mentioned, once you target, once you find your axis, you're ready to go. You have to make sure that the window or the axis is safe by turning the flow uh, uh, option in the machine so you can see any traversing vessel. But I would also recommend to avoid that noise created by the probe of the scope is to listen the pressure applied against the wall. Uh, once you have less, 10 millimeter or less distance from uh, or the, the mural thickening, once you have no traversing vessels of concern and you have nothing um, in the axis of the catheter when you puncture, such as, as you see in the image now, you can see a lot of debris, and Dr. Abed is trying to find an axis where there's no debris that will counter the axis or the catheter um, axis. So, so the problem now, we are, uh, thank you, Ahmed. So I think yeah. it's a very important step. As you see, we are higher up at the junction. So this is not a good uh, side to drain because uh, it will be... Uh, uh, the gastrocephalic junction, so you have to be away, and you have to push at least five centimeters away of the of the junction. In this case, I think very difficult. But as you see, a huge collection, as you see here, and then if you pull back, there is another communication there, another collection there, necrosis there. So we have to have at least a good distance or away from the gastrocephalic junction. So we try to to have a good access. Then planning to drain it with using lamps. Well, uh, today we have uh, a new lamps. You can give the, uh, can give the light so on. Today we have Hanaro stent. Uh, I'm going to just show it here, Abid, in front of you. Yes. So this is the can Hanaro light? stent. Um, Main, yeah, the big, big yeah. as, as Abid mentioned, for the longest time we have been having uh, two different models within the our market, basically the lamps uh, made by Boston Scientific, mm -hmm. which also called or known as Axis. The advantage of that um, lambs was basically having the electric part 
electrocardiopath so he can use it one stage puncture of the lesion and the, cell, the targeted cyst to drain. Uh, but now we have another uh, company uh, today, which is Hanaurostent. Um, almost, um, I, I can't see much different uh, in terms of uh, features. It has the same uh, features that we used to apply. So this is another plug and play uh, tool in the market. So basically it has the same handle, the same safety keys where you can actually control the sheath. Then you control the deployment of the stent itself over the sheath. Self-explained. So I might just want to mention. Sure. So there is only three steps. So the the different between the other devices. Zoom, zoom. So uh, you have the sheet. This is step one, and then if you want to perform, can the you yeah, you can you can you can uh, hold them like this, oh. and then unlock, and then push inside, push it inside, push down, push, push down. down. Okay. Okay. Out. Oh, sorry. Out. Then show this one. Okay, and that's it. Okay. You lock it? Yeah. Show them the lock command. Yeah. Well then you have to lock, get it up a little bit, up, 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 and then you have to lock it. Right. Then you go up, you turn it only. Hold the scope. So only you turn. Okay, until you see the click. And then you get up all the way. You and then you see the stand there is already deployed. Right there, yeah. Then. then once you have it, go back and adjust your catheter again. And then locked, and then you have to turn again, and then you go deployed at the end, and you hear the cl that step. And these all three uh, three steps are maybe similar four steps. You hear the click, you rotate, you hear the click, and you see it's similar mechanism. The purposes of the those lamps usually safety of the procedure. Right. If you have the a water, the the so excellent, the, the two centimeters and. 16 millimeters. I can show you another. Yeah. Uh, the it's two centimeter, but in reality, the working or the real length of the stent is almost 1.2 or 1.4. Right. Okay. At only sharp at the tip. I think there's a more than four wires there compared to other. They have only one or two wires. So, so yeah, th that react. was referring, uh, uh, Dr. Abed is referring to the ceramic tip, so basically it's a puncture more than just, uh, okay, so uh, basically uh, we're going to go back to the case. Uh, first of all, just a, a quick um, a note to, to remember, walled up magnetic necrosis only treated and intervened upon if the patient is symptomatic. So this patient clearly is symptomatic, so therefore we are cho choosing to drain it and do necrosectomy. So can we turn on the... So usually they inherited the four weeks from the old surgical literature. So why that? Because uh, four weeks you have a very mature wall and then easy to be drained. But in reality, some of the patients, they can be drained less than four weeks. Uh, if they have a mature cyst within two weeks or four weeks, or they are very sick in ICU and then multi-organ failure, then those patients, they can drain them. But... Uh, the, the, the four weeks is still is applicable, and then you have to have a good assessment by imaging to see if you have a, a good uh, mature wall. All right, so if uh, it depends on the symptoms, actually. Right. If so you, yeah, go ahead. If, if, I, if I may say something now, the, I guess the question has to be switched a little bit. So when the patient is symptomatic, um, at that point, you would decide which is the best approach. If the patient is symptomatic, they may need to be drained a week after because they are septic, they are actually crashing, you're losing the patient, the patient in the ICU, then you assist through imaging. If you have an access to do it through EUS, which is internally drain, or you have to do it percutaneously, or you should take the patient to the OR. So the question, no longer how long you wait, rather you should ask, when it's due to be drained, what is the best modality to do that? Um, I think okay. that's the way we should ask the question. So this is the, now I think is a good, what do you think? Uh, yeah. Hold for me the scope like this. Oh, I'm sorry. So what do we do now? I think, I think now that uh, Dr. Abed was trying to find the best uh, position by trying to uh, get a direct access to have the scope a little bit straight, not kink it so that the exit of the stent will not be problematic. 
and he's trying to get away from the debris, as Dr. Ahmed said also, and not to have any intervening vessels. This is our, these are the three criteria we are trying to get for best access. Okay, so. So, yeah. so now we have to, we have the stent inside already, okay? Wait. I have to uh, try to, to... If you are having the, the white point at the right side, yes. That's the stent here? Yeah, show me the US picture, please. Both, yes. Excellent. So what I'm doing now, so we have to have a good touch of the wall, the gastric wall, and also with the collection. And the same times I have to press in the bottle of the of the uh, electrosurgical unit. Then, at the same time, I have to puncture. We are inside. Yes. Okay. You see, Doctor Abe tried to avoid tenting by pushing by pushing the cautery uh, before touching the wall to avoid uh, tenting of the wall. Now what you will do, yeah, I have to disconnect. So when we, uh, we, are, we are done already. So, so and then I have to lock. Then I have to unlock this one. So it's already the already. So I have to deploy the stent inside. Okay, still it's a little bit hard. So I have to use my finger. Okay. This is a distal Assemble. flange. So this is a distal flange now. Yes. It takes some time to, to open completely. So uh, just, uh, especially when there are sick debris inside. So now it's already locked. So I can give you some principle either for this device or maybe the other devices. The stent cannot work if the both steps locked and cannot work if the both steps are open. You have to lock one to open the other. Now the system is already locked. So I have to unlock the catheter now to adjust it up a little bit. Okay. Okay. It was hard. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now you have to pull back. It's similar to the hot axis. And now, as you see, I think this is enough. What do you think, uh, Madden? Uh, so I. Hear me now. So this is the tip of the delivery device catheter after we pushed it in. So we deployed the first phalange, which is the distal phalange of the stent, like an umbrella. Abid is creating a little tension on the wall in order to deploy the second phalange within the channel and then completely release the stent. So now we have to go. Thank you, Omad. So now we have to go to the final step. So the stent already... Uh, uh, adjusted and also snag and shape of the sentence already there so I have to deploy it inside the channel okay no it's this is the end so already now it's deployed okay once it's deployed so you have to relax so everything by US now we deployed everything so what we will do and then we have to push to uh, pick them picture, yeah picture, yeah yes Yes, Bab. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's clear. You have to go back. And then you have to put it out, out of the of the scope. You see, out the scope, see? Yeah. So, same Dr. Abid is yeah. trying to torque to the right. Yes. To the right and leaving the upper wheel down. Okay, now we are out completely. So, the stent already deployed. So, we have to get the catheter out. So you see the stomach yeah, now is yeah. full of, of drainage, so we have to suck. So that's, that's it, and we are done.